back to Ben Cost Mattrician. Uh, where are we? Today is, uh, I don't know what day it is, uh, Saturday, uh, towards the end of May. Um, I'm on South End Farm, which is in Wolfham Abbey. Um, I've, never, I've been here before, I've fished here before, but I've probably only fished here two or three times. So it is something very, very, very different for me. Um, it's a southeast qualifier. So there's, I think there's four or five qualifiers, um, six peg sections. And then, um, then there's a final on this big lake with some really, really good prize money up for grabs. So basically my aim today is to win my six peg section. Um, just to give you an idea where I am, if anyone knows it. So you've got the, got the main car park there. You come down and then you come round and I'm here on peg, on peg 11. So let me talk about my plan for the day. I mean, I've, I've spoke to three or four people who have given me some good advice. Um, thing is, you know, you can listen to so many different things. Um, and I think sometimes you just need to try and sort of fish to your strengths. Uh, and if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, you know, you can say you tried your best. It's silvers only, um, it's pole only. Um, so I have set up sort of light hook lengths. If I do hook a carp, I'm not gonna be messing about uh, too much with the carp, fingers crossed, because obviously there is a few carp showing uh, and it is warm. So let's go through my plan for the day. Let's go through me, um, let's talk about my plan first. So <clears throat> I've set up 13 meters to me left where I'm gonna feed ground bait and casters and dead maggots, hard on the bottom. Um, I've then pushed out another sort of metre and, meter and a half to my right where I'm going to feed micros and expanders. Um, I'm going to start on the ground bait and I'm going to keep sort of looking at the ground bait. Um, I do feel though they might back off to that pellet line because obviously every peg's in and it's quite a lot of pressure on the lake but I'm confident I'll catch on pellets. Not sure about ground bait. I don't know, it's warm. Um, I've also set up a short line here uh, where I'm just going to throw casters, uh, pin casters, should we say. And I've got a rig there for sort of fishing through the water. Um, I've then also set up a shallow rig as well for over the top. Um, I've then set up basically just a, a rig here, just a sort of throwaway line, sort of just down the shelf, sorry, just up the shelf here, where I'm just going to sort of throw a bit of bait and never know, might say, might turn up, maybe a few big perch or maybe even a couple of big bream, you never know. This, uh, let's have a look, look at my rigs. As I said, this isn't something I do regular. So what I've had to do today is I've had to literally get up at 4 a.m. because uh, I just didn't have time uh, and sit and make up some rigs. So what I've made up is I've made up two gram rigs. So this is a, one of them Preston, what do they call it? Power. So it's a one gram power float. So the line goes all the way through the body. Uh, it's got a nice sort of, um, nice bodied float. Um, nice and stable. It's about nine foot deep. Uh, this one here, so I've basically set up the same rig. So this is an oil vet and three number 10 droppers. Uh, and that's on a 16 Tubertini 808 to an 010 bottom. So that's for fishing pellets. So I'm gonna get my bait down with my oil vet there. And then I've got three droppers just below. Uh, and that's for fishing pellets, 14 meters. <clears throat> got the same rig with a slightly different shot in patterns. This is uh, the same float, so the pa uh, Preston Power. Um, that's again with an Olivet, and that's with a uh, double bulk. So I've got three, I've got three number tens, and I've got a couple of spares there. So if I need to sort of spread those out or move that about, but I'm going to start off with that sort of three or four inches over depth and a double bulk rig. Um, and that's for fishing 30 meters on the ground bait. So the idea being, obviously the, the bulk shot is just off the bottom, uh, sort of just there. Uh, and I'm fishing for, for a lift bite, shall we say. Um, that's actually very, very slightly shallower than, than the 14 meter line. But as I said, I'm about sort of three or four inches over depth on that one. <clears throat> I've also set up for the shorter line, seven meters, six, seven meters, seven meters. This is a Pablo RWC. Don't know the name of it, but it's a carbon pattern. That's a 0.5. And I've got number 11 shots spread out the whole way through the rig. So that's purely for fishing all the way through the water, throwing casters. 
that is about mm, six and a half foot deep. I've got an 18, 808, two Bettini on that. Uh, and as I said, I'm just gonna literally lay the rig in, it's a carbon float, and fish that all the way through the water. I then set up a 4B8s uh, small carbon float that's shallow. I've, I've got that set at the moment at three foot. Um, so again, that's if they've come off the bottom. So, or if I can find them. So I can have a little search between sort of four and, what, two and four foot, should we say, on that one. <clears throat> and then I've just set up a, just a very, very basic uh, rugby ball float, wire stem, bulk and two droppers. And that's for just down the edge there. Just as a bit of a throwaway line, should we say. Bait wise, three pints of casters. Got some micros, got some dead maggots, got some expanders. Um, I've mixed up, what have I mixed up? I've mixed up uh, half a bag of Karma, half a bag of Special G, and some Special G Dark, just to sort of darken it off slightly. Uh, I might give it another little spray actually, just to wetten it up. But uh, yeah, that's my ground bait there. Um, so yeah, Special G, Special G Dark, and a bit of Karma, just to sort of take the edge off slightly. Um, so I'm going to obviously be using the ground bait on the ground bait line. I've got micros and expanders to the to the right hand side, 14 and a half meters, and then cast is short. I've got three pints of those. Nice and simple. Um, I was going to fish meat long, but I've actually uh, not got any meat with me, so I've uh, managed to leave that at home. But never mind. Hopefully we'll catch on casters and we'll catch on what we're doing. So at least it, you know, at least I can concentrate on what I'm doing, should we say, and not overcomplicate it too much. Um, but yeah. Hope you're all having a nice day and uh, I'll check in throughout the day and see how we're going. Speak soon. Right, I thought it was time for a quick update, guys. Match has been going an hour and a half. Um, see how it's gone so far. So, started 13 metres to my left. No, lying. Started short. Casters, feeding casters, not a bite. So, I've quickly gone long, 13 metres. <clears throat> um, just fish over my ground bait line. I've had a bream and a couple of small skimmers, but that's died. Got me back to you, by the way, so apologies about that. Um, so I've then gone another couple of joints, or well, one more joint, 14 metres to my right, sort of uh, about one o'clock. So we've got sort of 10 o'clock on one o'clock. Uh, pellets, and I've had sort of three or Three little skimmers on that uh, and that's gone a bit iffy so I've just gone back to me ground bait line with maggots and I've just had a bream a couple of pound uh, and that's it so far so yes yeah, so I've got one bream about three one about two three or four skimmers um, and that's where we are at the moment I'm just on the um, ground rig 13 meters double maggot couple of inches over depth and just holding it still over the top of the ground bait. Um, I did hook a carp first put in as well, which obviously carp don't count, so that's uh, that's messing me up a little bit to start with. Um, but yeah, that's where we are. Um, ben to my right has got, he's catching small fish, uh, but he's getting plenty of bites. Uh, Martin to his right, he's got a few bream, and then to my left, uh, I think they're struggling, if I'm honest, I think they're struggling. Um, I'm pinging casters short when I can, uh, I will try casters short again in a bit, but I'm just going to literally try and sort of rotate these three lines if I, if I can, hopefully pick a couple of fish off one, a couple of fish off another one. Um, and then come back and basically repeat, shall we say. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough match. They're actually fizzing. I've actually got them fizzing on that, on that ground bait now. And I can't seem to uh, get a bite over it. It's quite strange. I'm literally just putting my Olivette straight on top of the, straight on top of where I've fed. And, and they are fizzing there. So there's definitely fish there. I might try a little bit more on the bottom. I might put a little bit more line on the bottom in a sec. Just to give them a little bit more time to take it. Because I've got I've got a sort of bulk shot just above the just above the hook length. And then I'd olivette. So 
effectively I'm fishing for a lift, a lift bite for a decent fish. Um, probably got a couple of inches on the bottom at the moment, but uh, I might put a little bit more on maybe. We'll see. As I said, there's fizz in there on that line. Hopefully there's a big old bream there somewhere that will, that will take it. I've sort of gone for the sort of fish for a bigger fish approach, we say, rather than sort of pinging and catching small fish, but it's just really, you know, what way, oops, which, what way to go, really. Busy with little fish, or try and sort of sit it out for you no, know, for, for a decent fish. Let's take a shot. Let's, uh, let's take a shot off this. All right, that's your update, guys. We'll check in again in a bit. All right, I thought it was time for a quick update, guys. Uh, time's twelve o'clock. Um, Gone back to the ground bait and maggot line, 13 metres. Just put a couple, well I've caught another sort of three skimmers and a better one a couple of pound, uh, literally just now. I took a slight bit of depth off, so I'm a couple of inches over depth rather than sort of four or five inches, should we say. Uh, just started feeding tiny little nuggets of ground bait with um, maggots and casters in it. Just tiny little nuggets, and they seem to be reacting. <clears throat> what have I done there? What have I done there? That's it. Let's just see what, if I can get one this put in. Once again, sorry about the uh, having me back to you. Carp all over the top, so it's uh, a bit of a worry that obviously if you put too much, too much food in, you're gonna you're gonna hook a carp. It's obviously what you don't want in a silver's match. Um, but yeah, so I've got I've got three better bream and a, a few skimmers. Uh, so yeah, I'm not I'm there or thereabouts, I suppose. To my left, struggling. Uh, guy to my right's catching fish, but small. And then the guy in the corners getting good bream. I'd say he's probably got a bit more than me. <clears throat> Still pinging casters short, sort of six, seven meters. If this line, yeah, there's a cart there now. If this, if this line dies, uh, or when this line dies, should we say, I will put a bit more ground bait in and have another look on pellets to my right. Uh, all I could catch on that earlier was small skimmers, whereas the better fish do seem to have sort of come to the ground bait. But what I don't want to do is obviously the carp come along and upset the party, should we say. Bites I've had have literally the floats has gone um, great big, great big lift bites, unmissable bites where they're obviously lifting those two or three shots, which are just above the up length. Obviously dislodging the float and the float coming up. Beautiful day, sun's out, absolutely lovely day. It's nice to get, you know, do something a bit different. I'm gonna try and, as I said before, or one of my earlier videos, this year I really am gonna try and sort of go to sort of different venues, uh, try different things rather than just keep going to the same place over and over again, um, just try and sort of uh, vary what I'm doing. Well, if this was a cart match, I'd tell you, you'd catch a few. They're all over the top now, basking in the sunshine. <clears throat> Probably only a matter of time before I hook another one and get broken up. Where I'm, where I'm fishing there, where the ground bait is, I can sort of see it fizzing. Um, 
some people call it gill feeding or, or they're just sort of sucking into the silt. That's a bite. Ah, that's come off. So it's a case of obviously um, just like laying it in and sort of sit and wait for a, a skimmer or a broom to take it, fingers crossed. Uh, the pellet's a little bit more active, obviously. I've got the pellet line set up, <clears throat> uh, dead depth. And then obviously if you strike, you'll come back and put a fresh pellet on. So, you know, it's preferable if I can, well, it's easier, should we say, if I can catch on this line. Let's put a few more casters in. Just feeding sort of little hard, rich balls of uh, crumb with uh, a few casters and big maggots. I don't know if I mentioned my setup earlier, so um, the float is a uh, Preston Power in a gram. Uh, main line, main line 015 main line, so it's nice and durable. Uh, 010 hook length, 6 inch, uh, 16 808 hook. Was it an 18? No, 18 808 hook on the maggot and a 16 on the pellet. Uh, it's quite a wide gape hook, nice, uh, nice sort of round bended hook. So you can, you know, 4 mil pellet, no issue at all. Uh, 010 bottom, as I said, so obviously if I do hook a carp, hook a carp, it will break. Don't really want to be sitting here playing carp when I could be obviously busy, hopefully trying to catch silvers, should we say. But um, yeah, it's fizzing again. Let's see if we can get one this put in. With this sort of, with this sort of method should we say you want you want it just stable you want it dead still you don't want it sort of tying through you know if it starts tying through there's no way a breen will take it you want it now you know now to the bottom and wait for that sort of positive lift or positive positive bite Again, when you're doing this, you know, it's, it's important to sort of try around your feed. You know, feed, it's always feed in the same place, but try a bit past it, try to the left, try to the right. You might, you, might, you know, sometimes pick one up that's sort of on the edge, edge of the feed, should we say. Keep, keep need to remember to keep pinging those casters short as, as a fallback plan, should we say. Got a couple of rigs set up short. I've got one on the deck, strung out, and one at sort of half depth, which I can vary, sort of a shallow rig. I'll try this for a bit longer, feed it again. That's a fight. It's a carp right next to it as well. Good fish. The problem is with this, they come, they come right up to the top and you'll come. It'd be nice if they just came along nicely and then you could just pull them up. If that makes sense. Not huge, but welcome. Maybe a pound and a bit, maybe. skimmer. All right, we'll check in again in a bit, guys. See, you know it's going. Cheers. <clears throat> All right, so the time is half one. Uh, thought it was time for a little update on how the day's going. Uh, a few more skimmers. I've come 
I've come short on casters and caught a few roach and a couple of skimmers, sort of slightly better ones, uh, sort of seven joints, six, seven joints. Uh, that's sort of gone a bit quiet. I'm still pinging casters short. Uh, gone back over me ground bait and sort of ground bait line, should we say, uh, double maggot. Um, had a couple of skimmers now, but pulled out of a couple. Um, pellet line, I might look at again, but skimmers on that were very, very small. So if I can alternate between this line that I'm on now, sort of like the, the ground bait line, should we say, and uh, cast a shallow line, then that might be okay. That's a bite. That was a good bite, is it? Sometimes I'm, I'm thinking, if you get a few bream in the peg, it, some of these bites are liners, because there's a couple I've sort of looked into and pulled out of and come back with slime on the line. So I don't know whether it's, whether I'm sort of, they're just sort of brushing into the line. <clears throat> you know, I suppose you've got to get the fish there in the first place, but um, you don't want too many. I've started feeding little hard balls of, uh, of crumb sort of every other put in, sort of, I've weighted some of it down and sort of micro, um, maggots and casters in with it. Um, so little hard balls to just sort of try and, sort of try and concentrate them, shall we say. So probably got, I don't know, 15 pound maybe, something like that, along them lines. Wouldn't say I've got much more than that. I'd say Ben, the other Ben to my right, has got slightly more. I'd say Martin to his right has got slightly more again. Uh, to my left, I don't think I'm doing much to the left there. or two but it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen on this update give it another minute or so I suppose see if it goes I think we'll have another look short we'll get on Passes because uh, Ben next to me is catching again shallow since I've stopped feeding it. Seems I catch one and then no, I can't watch him catch the catch and not catching it. Have a little look on the shallow line. So set about two and a half foot maybe in that region. Just three number 11s. Pinging casters over the top. Let's see how this goes.
straight away. That's what you want. Them little jumpers. Literally just took the bait and jumped straight out of the water. I always remember back in the day, I used to fish these quite often. I don't know why they do it. They, you jump, they, you know, you'll come and they, they jump clean of the water. Good fish. All right, that's your update, guys. We're checking again in a bit. <clears throat> Ten to two. Got on my short line. I've had three, four nice skimmers in not long, if I'm honest. Um, just fishing casters still. This just looks right in the corner of the mouth. that hook gone in there like that? Broke me hook. Uh, that's annoying. Alright, so I've it. put a new hook on. Back to what I was saying, so I caught one 13 metres, gone back to me caster line. Six joints. And I've had three and three puts. Um, Ten to two. So we've got two hours left. Uh, hopefully, I can queue up some. Well, yeah, queue up some skimmers, really. They're the ones I want. The ones that jump. The, they seem to be better fish. A couple of times I've not fed and caught one. A couple of times I've fed and caught one. I think it's literally just pot luck, really. Hopefully some bigger fish have moved in. And they stay, fingers crossed. That might be a carp. Well, I don't know. It's either a carp or a phallic brain. I don't actually know what it is. Oh, look. Oh, bream. I'm going to start putting them in the other net as well, just to even the nets out a bit. Thought it was a carp for a minute. They're the ones you want though, definitely. Hundred percent. They're the ones you want. Right, checking again soon, guys. Alright, little update for you. So, I'm still on the short line. Just managed to wheedle out this nice skimmer, or bream, should we call it? A couple of pounds, probably. Some casters again, still. Uh, time is quarter past two. So, we've still got a fair bit of time left. Um, Sort of goes, you could get a few and then it goes quiet and you sort of get a few tiddlers and you pull out of a few and then you sort of have two or three. It's quite odd. I was quite funny enough, I was just literally thinking on that line just then. I might go, go have another look on the ground bait line and then it went. So that fish has earned um, me another go. So let's see if we can have another, have another one.
bite. Don't know if that was a skimmer or not. Seems I get the odd perch, the odd tiny roach. Um, the skimmers are getting slightly bigger, which is good, but not lots of them, unfortunately. That is a carp there, just under my float. There's two carp there, I can see now. I guess it's only a matter of time before it, one of them. That's a skimmer, my bream. you want. Oh, right in the eye. Right in, hooked him right in the eyeball, poor thing. I don't know if you can hear that noise on the uh, through the microphone, but there's some kennels, must be some kennels, literally. So if you are planning on coming here, the fishing is brilliant, but you are going to have to sit and listen to dogs barking all day long. Uh, they literally do not stop, haven't stopped all day. So there's got to be some sort of kennel situation just over here somewhere. It's a bit of useless information there for you. Back to the fishing. <laughs> Just trying to hang it there, see if I can get another another skimmer. Just hang it there for a sec. See if there's one that will take it. If not, I will lay the rig in again. Ping again. Not pinging loads, trying to ping sort of freezing fours. Just uh, the rig has basically just got three number 11s on it spread out. Uh, so it's just going through the water really, really slowly. And what's happened a couple of times is, is sort of it hit its depth and gone. Bream, that's what you want. If it goes before that, it tends to be a smaller fish. All right, so this will probably be your final update for the day. Um, <coughs> not been too bad. I've, Caught a few fish, um, come, come in and caught a few skimmers on casters, uh, but not loads, a few. Gone back to 13 metres again. Got about 20 metres of the match left. Got back, gone back to 13 metres again. I've had one, I've had, I think, four in four puts. Not huge skimmers. I think it's probably a couple of pounds, I'd say. Um, it's been nice, it's been a nice day. It's been uh, difficult, but... But nice. I'm now feeding sort of just, uh, as I said, hard balls of crumb. Just hanging it over the top, hard on the bottom. It's about nine foot deep probably. And I'm either getting a sail away or a, or a lift bite. I've pulled out of a couple, but <clears throat> last four puts I've had four fish, so it's not been bad. 
weather can't make its mind up whether it wants to blow in my face, rain, sun, temperature's been up and down, we've now got the wind in our face. I'd say it's going to be close between myself and Ben on the next peg, um, two Bens on the trot. I'd say, I'd say he's probably beat me. Uh, he started catching a few bream down the edge. He's had some right dollops, I mean like four pounders. So I'd say he's probably, he's probably edged me. But it's been a bit of a learning curve for a new venue. I'll get one on film just to finish the day off, shall we? Another one, of, another flying one. Aye, oh. hey? another dolphin. It does make me laugh the way they, the way they jump like that when you hook them. Not a huge fish, but more than welcome. Slightly smaller than earlier. Probably a pound and a half, I'd say there, in that region, probably. So we do that again, shall we? And have it on camera. So, hard ball of crumb in the pot. Double maggot on yuck. Wait for either a sail away bite or a, or a big lift bite. There he goes, there's a lift bite. Not that, not that time. All right, so that was that. That was uh, Southfield Farm. So I'm just waiting for me, uh, waiting for the scalesman. Um, it's been interesting. Uh, I, as as you probably know, I don't fish silverfish venues. Very very rare do I fish a silver only match. Um, so I've had to really sort of have a strong think about what I was going to do, and spoke to a few people, set a plan, etc. etc. So the plan was 13 meters uh, ground bait and ground bait maggots casters hard on the bottom. 14 and a half to my right pellets, and then six meters casters up and down. Um, I've caught a few fish on casters up and down, mainly up, if I'm honest, two, three foot. Uh, I've had probably 10 skimmers on that. Um, I've gone, I've had a couple of goes on pellets, but only small, small skimmers, so I've come off that, left that alone. Um, they've turned up on the ground bait later at 13 meters, and I've had some good dollops there. Um, some good fish, probably two and a half pound skimmers. I wouldn't like to guess the weight. I'm going to guess 30 pound, but obviously we'll see when the uh, when the scout husband comes along. But yeah, it's been a really, really enjoyable day. Something a bit different, something to get my head around. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the weigh-in. Cheers.
Even tried to throw that one back. I and I nearly threw that one back, yeah. <laughs> What did you have then? 62. You went in the section? Yeah. Uh, one or more. Uh, you can have the other one as well if you want. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Put them in one if you've thrown in this more than six. Well, that was that. Uh, South End Farm, South East Qualifier. I didn't qualify. I didn't qualify, but what a brilliant day. I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, I've had £48. Um, £62 has beat, beat me to my right. That was Ben Bray in the next peg. Funnily enough, I actually did catch more skimmers than he did, but his were just that slightly better stamp. Um, but yeah, what a, what a great match. Really enjoyed it. So, as I said, I don't do this, don't do that sort of fishing very much. Normally it's carp or, you know. Silvers only, pole only. I've caught on the deck, ground bait, 13 metres, double maggot, uh, waiting for the float to either lift or a sail under, sort of a double bulk. Uh, I've had a couple on pellets long, but they were small. Uh, I've come short, caught on casters shallow, which was really good fun. Um, the difference was Ben next to me's gone in the edge late and caught some real big bream, like four pounders, um, which has sort of edged it. But yeah, what a cracking day. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the upload, guys. Uh, thanks again. Uh, well, you know, as always, thanks to Colmick and Bait Tech and Oakwood Angling and all the support I get. Um, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant day. I hope you enjoyed the upload, something a bit different. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.